Arsenal predicted lineup 2020 to 2021. That's right, lads. The new season is only a week away, and with new season comes a bit of brand new hope. So, with Arsenal fans once again excited for the season, with the incoming transfers of Gabriel Magalhaes and a few others potentially, I think it's about time we go over the Arsenal predicted lineup and talk exactly how Mikel Arteta can line up his Arsenal players as we bid to return to the UEFA Champions League. So, with that being said guys welcome back to your boys channel we are back again and today we are discussing the predicted lineup on the 20 21 season here we go let's be having you Yo, what's going on, guys? My name is Babs14, and welcome back to your boy's channel. This video has been kindly brought to you by the One Football app. And if you don't know what One Football is, then it's time to listen up, lads. One Football is one of the best footballing apps on the market at the moment. And so, if you guys would like to stay up to date with the team's transfer news, team news, any stats, and anything regarding your football club, then One Football is the app for you. And so, lads, if you can do your boy's channel a massive favor, go down in the description, hit that link, and download the One Football app. It is massively, massively appreciated. And so, it's also go down there smash a like on the video and also do subscribe to the channel if you're new let me know your thoughts in the comments below on your predictions and how do you think Arsenal should line up follow all my social media and subscribe to the offsiders the links are in the description below but with that being said guys here we are and here we go again it is a brand new season and so let's have a brand new predictor lineup let's be having you starting off with the formation we are gonna go for the full free free formation right now this is very interesting because so far under the career of Mikel Arteta Arsenal have gone for a 3 4 3, and let's just say your boy is not the biggest fan of a back three. Yes, in certain big games like a City, Chelsea, and Liverpool, yes, it has worked. But at the end of the day, this is not the formation I think Arteta is going to go for. After all, having come through La Masia in Barcelona and then worked under Mr. Pep Guardiola, Arteta is a master in the full 3 3 system, with the midfield being the very key thing about that team. And so, yes, the back three has worked in certain games, but as you guys saw in certain games where teams decide to sit back, we really struggle to open them up part and I think that is mainly due to the fact that we simply do not have enough midfielders and so if we are to move to the full 33 system I think that works and that is what we are going to go for but lads let me know what you guys would do would you stick with a 3 4 3 or would you go into the 4 3 system like your boy moving on lads to the goalkeeper it's going to be Emiliano Martinez hey yo this was a sticky one I'll tell you that right now because on one hand we had the German world-class goalkeeper and Bert Leno who was arguably Arsenal's second best player last season under Pierre Aubameyang but then you also have a man like Emiliano and this is a guy who has really really impressed Arsenal fans not only has he won us points not only has he kept us in games but has just been a very very good goalkeeper and I also believe what gives Martinez the edge of a Bert Leno is his kicking ability ever since he's come into the Arsenal team how many goals have we scored passing out of the back just go back to that goal against Man City in the semi-final of the FA Cup what a goal it was beautiful and it all started from Martinez passing out of the back and just off that basis I think Martinez is going to be Arsenal's number one goalkeeper but as I have said, this is a sticky one to lads. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Who would you go for? But Leno or Emiliano Martinez? It's over to you. Moving on to right back, it's going to be Ainsley Maitland Niles. Once again, another sticky decision because we have two very good right backs and Cedric Suarez, which is, yeah, he's still here. But in terms of right backs we're talking about here is Maitland Niles and Hector Bellerin. And these are two players that have had massive doubts over their futures at Arsenal. Initially, you had Maitland Niles being linked heavily with a 20 pound move over to Wolverhampton Wanderers. But now, you have massive reports coming out of France and England that PSG are after man like Hector Bellerin and so I personally believe with Arsenal transfers in mind we are going to have to sell one of those players and I think that player is going to be man like Hector Bellerin but it isn't just that I also believe AZ Maitland-Niles is far more suited to the Mikel Arteta system in terms of what he wants from his fullback he wants an inverted midfielder and so with Maitland-Niles being such a versatile player and having the ability to play as that central midfielder as well this guy just has it and it all adds up again I have nothing against Hector Bellerin but in terms of my personal opinion I'm gonna go with A's mate now lads let me know yours in the comments below is over to you moving on to the first center back in is gonna be William Saliba the day is here we have arrived and it is beautiful after a long year of waiting having sent Saliba 
back all alone to Saint Etienne. The beautiful Frenchman is finally here and the day has finally arrived where we will see this guy start as an Arsenal player. Now I know with Salah but the key thing here is his age. A lot of fans will say this guy is still too young, too inexperienced and he cannot be an Arsenal starter. And to those fans I understand your concerns but also have a look out of the centre backs. David Luiz, Socrates, Mustafi, it doesn't fill you with the most of confidence does it? And also in terms of Salah but we're not getting just a average centre back. This guy is one of the best young centre backs in the world. If you look at his stats compared to other centre backs in Liga last year, this guy actually trumps a lot of more experienced centre backs. And so with him being so young, this guy may just be the Mbappe of centre backs. Now yes, that may just be a massive over exaggeration, but at the same time I believe Arteta is going to start William Saliba. After what we've seen so far in his managerial career is he is not scared to start youngsters, just like the likes of Bukayo Saka and Gabriel Martinelli. And so with Saliba's ability to play out the back, dribble out the back, I just think Saliba is going to start. And in terms of Virgil van Dijk, I hope you're shaking because we are coming for you. No, we're not. Please don't take me seriously. Moving on lads to the left side, center back, and it's gonna be Gabriel Morales. I cannot go a video without saying this guy's name. It is my addiction and I can do nothing about it. Of course, I'm gonna talk about Gabriel Magales. After all, there's a massive reason why Arsenal spent the money, got him with the likes of Man United and Napoli, and that's because Arteta sees this guy as the main Arsenal centre-back. Again, like Saliba, experience plays a part, but again, we are getting one of the best ball-playing centre-backs in the world. And listen, don't just take my word for that. Let the stats do the talking for themselves. We are talking about a guy who's committed 62 passes per game more than any other Lille player. Second to long balls by Antiago Silva. And no Lille player attempted more forward passes last season. In terms of Arteta, he wants to play some beautiful football playing at the back. And so when you have two comfortable centre backs like Saliba Magalhães, yes, experience plays a part, but they are just so good on the ball that you cannot ignore that. And of course, I am going to start man like Gabriel Magalhães. Left footed, gives us balance. He has the ball playing technicalities as well as being a rock solid defender. And so my centre back partnership is going to be William Saliba and Gabriel Magalhães. Lads, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Moving on to left back and it's going to be Kieran Tierney. This has to be the easiest call of the entire lineup. Not only do we have Scotland's finest left back, okay, you then have Andy Robertson as well, but Tierney is just a player who is just unsurmountable and undroppable. He has everything when he left back. He can get forwards, he can defend, and just is overall a very complete player. I mean, do you really want to see Mesut as a bodyguard, aka said Clash next start? No, we're good. And so in terms of the left back, we are going to see Tesco's finest, man like Kiritini start, no debates, no talking, we move, we move, we move. Now lads, moving on to the central midfield, it is going to be Granite Xhaka. Now this is where it gets very interesting, because as you guys can see so far, this lineup is also going to include transfers, and the midfield is when it starts getting a bit saucy lads. In terms of the central defence midfield, I think it has to be Granite Xhaka. Yes, we have the likes of Danny Sabas returning alone, and yeah, we might even have a bit of a party as well. But I think in terms of being that like deep line playmaker, Xhaka fits the role perfectly. And under the tutelage of Mikel Arteta, this guy has become one of our main midfielders. I think the question now really is, can he hold that defence? And so this is going to be a massive team for Granit Xhaka. Was he just form, or is he really now a full-on Arsenal player? Lads, wait and see. But I'm going to go for Xhaka as a central defensive midfielder. Moving on now to the first attacking number eight, and that's going to be Thomas Party. Oh, lads, here we are. The party has begun. Now, this again is a very controversial decision. Of course, first things first, let's make it straight. Partey has not signed for the Arsenal yet. But in terms of me personally, I am confident I believe Partey is going to be an Arsenal player. And if and when he signs, it is not a matter of where does he play. Of course, a lot of fans would like to see him play as that Granit Xhaka role. But I think this is a common misconception about Thomas Partey. I think, yes, he is a very good defensive midfielder and he has very good defensive stats. But Partey has just so much more to his game. Not only is a fantastic forward thinking passer, but also is a world class dribbler and he also just loves to burst forwards and so I can't help but compare him to the likes of Yaya Torre and Patrick Vieira. Again it is a massive comparison to make but I think Partey just has so much more to this game than a sit back deep but lads let me know your thoughts in the comments below do you think Partey is going to sign for the Arsenal and if he does where do you want him to play and let me know your thoughts in those comments below. Moving on lads to the second advanced number 8 and that's going to be Hasim Awa. Ayo now we are really talking business here. Again let me make it straight this guy is not an Arsenal player and I'm not saying he's going to sign for the Arsenal but at the same time I can't lie I am semi-confident this deal can happen. Now again in this position we have a lot of options we've got the likes of Bukayo Saka, Joe Willock and Musmafro and also maybe a cheeky little bit of Danny Ceballos. Now in terms of who I know he's not the most creative of players but in terms of the profile of player we're talking here we're talking almost an like Andres Iniesta more player. A player yes you might not have the best assist and goals but has the ability to control games and just be a top top class baller and I think when 
but Arsenal right now, once we shift a few players over, I think we can make the money and sign a while. And now it's over to Arsenal, Arteta, Edu, whoever it is, go out there and get this deal done. Because if we can sign Hassan Awa, I think he'll make this metaphor from very good to almost nearly world class. So now we should wait and see, is it going to be a party or is it going to be Awa? Or is it going to be both Arsenal? It's over to get it done and please much appreciate it. Moving on lads now to the front three, right winger Nicolas Pepe. Resident's Blood FC is back in full effect. Last year you guys witnessed a cheeky little trailer and this year you are going to get the full on movie. In terms of Pepe last year, let's make it straight, I don't want to make too many excuses. But after this guy's a guy who had three different managers, from Emery to Jumberg to Arteta, having come into a new league with a new language and all that good stuff, it was always going to be difficult. But what we saw last year was a glimpse of Pepe being a very explosive player and this season we are going to see a massive volcanic eruption and the pressure is definitely going to be on Nicolas Pepe. Last year he may have had the whole adaptation excuses, this year they are not there and now it's over to Pepito, can you perform and are you worth the £72 million? Pepe show us the presence and we will love you for the rest of our lives. Moving on to the striker it's going to be Alexandra Lacazette. Like in terms of Lacazette right now we don't know whether he's going to be an Arsenal player going into next season because as of right now reports are heavily linked with a move to Atletico Madrid and with the likes of party at now being massive Arsenal targets we are going to need to sell few players to sign those players now in terms of me and my personal hopes I do believe the selling of players like Torreira and Socrates as well as maybe Bellerin can make up that money because as much as like as it wasn't as consistent last season he still was for me by far our best striker but again with him having only two years of this deal and 29 years of age I won't be surprised if I sold him but now the question really is if we are to sell Alexandre Lacazette who will the replacement be and Ketia or someone else lads I'm gonna throw it to you guys in the comments below let me know your thoughts and finally lads left winger is gonna be Pierre-Rick Aubameyang ending off on a pretty easy note we're talking Arsenal's captain we're talking Arsenal's top goal scorer we're talking Arsenal's go-to man we're talking about guys scored five goals in three games at Wembley and we are talking about three more years of the best striker in the Premier League yes as of right now filming Aubameyang's contract has not been announced but make no mistake this deal is done it's going to happen Aubameyang is going to stay at the Arsenal and when we see the Sequeda on paper, of course we're going to start man like Aubameyang. Now of course a lot of fans are going to argue this guy is more of a striker but I think Arteta has made it clear he is going to play him as that left winger and let's not lie, this guy does damage on the left wing. But make no mistake, Aubameyang is going to start because last year we may have won the FA Cup but this year we are coming full effect for the goal of boot and a cheeky little bit of UEFA Champions League. And so there you go lads, this is going to be my final lineup. Let me know yours in the comments below. Are we going to get Champions League football? We are going to wait and see. But with that being said, guys, I am going to end the video there. Of course, as always, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to go down there, drop a like on the video, and also do subscribe to the channel if you're new. As always, if you could do your boy a massive favor and download the one for both, the links are in the description below. Let me know your thoughts and comments below on the video itself and also your lineups. Follow my social media and subscribe to the offside, the links are in the description below. This has been my Arsenal predicted lineup for the 2020 to 21 season. So, Arsenal is now over to you. Get those signs off the line and let us have a cheeky little party, lads. I'll see you guys next time in a bit.